Hi everyone, it's Christine here from Ever After Paper Crafts. And yesterday, <clears throat> pardon me, I posted a video that showed how I created this shaker card. And that video focused solely on creating an actual shaker card and how to put it together, how to cut your acetate window, how to construct the card, essentially. And I had mentioned in that video that if anyone wanted to see how I watercolor painted this beautiful mermaid, just to leave me a comment or send me a message or email and let me know. I got a few messages, so I thought today I'd hop on and do a very quick video for you showing how I watercolor this beautiful mermaid. Now this uh, image comes from a new honeybee stamp set called Ocean Bliss and she's absolutely beautiful. So I just wanted to show that to you really quick and now we're gonna go ahead and get started. I have already uh, stamped the image onto Canson XL watercolor paper using my favorite ink for watercoloring which is Hero Arts black dye ink. So I've already taken care of that. So now it's time to go ahead and get coloring. And I think you'll be surprised at how few markers I use to color this image. And I'm gonna bring it up here real quick to the camera so you can really see all the shading and highlights in that. And I think that you will be amazed at how easy it is to create this effect using zig markers and a water uh, brush. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so you guys can see the coloring a bit better. And let's go ahead and get started. I always start with hair for some reason. It's just <laughs> ingrained in me and that's what I do. So um, I'm going to be using this Zig water brush. I like to use this particular water brush. It has a very fine point at the end that really lets me get into very small spaces. And a lot of the stamps that we all work with do have those incredibly small spaces. So this is my favorite. However, if you don't have a water brush, you can absolutely use a paintbrush and just dip it in water and uh, move the marker colors around. If you do that, I do recommend getting a paintbrush with a very fine tip like this one, for example. This one is a silver uh, round size four black velvet paintbrush, and they uh, even make size twos, which might even be better. Um, but you can absolutely do this without a water brush if you like. So let's go ahead and start with her hair. I used two colors for her beautiful hair. I used brown and light brown. And let me show you how I did this. And so I like to start, if you've watched any of my other coloring videos before, you, you will know that I like to take my coloring in sections. So my first section, I'm actually gonna do a pretty big chunk of it, just simply because um, I kind of know by looking at the drawing where the shadows and the highlights are going to be. If you look at this, uh, stamped image you can see little almost look like lines no they're not lines but they almost look like lines going across at various sections of the hair and I kind of see that little indent or whatever you'd like to call it as where it's going to be shadowed the most and the lights going to be hitting here in these areas where the hair juts out and in the areas where the hair kind of swoops in is where it's going to be darkest so hopefully that will make more sense when I put the color down when you're working with your zigs I always recommend that you start with your darkest color first so where it's going to be darkest here is certainly under the flower where also there's this indent of hair so I'm going to scribble down some brown there here's another one of those indents that I'm talking about and so I'm going to scribble down here with the brown which is my darkest color another one here and as you can see I'm literally scribbling down lines of color nothing special about the way that I'm coloring this no special techniques involved at all I'm just finding these indents here and putting my color down. And then we'll do a little bit at the bottom. All right, so now it's time to come in with our lightest color, which is our light brown. And all we're gonna do is blend it with the very tip, the very end edge of the brown. So here we have two places to put the light brown on each stripe, if you will, of brown color. We're gonna put some light brown at the top and some light brown at the bottom and just very carefully and slowly blend it with that brown marker. Same with this line here. Go through, go at the top and just pull some color out and go at the bottom and pull some of that brown out and mix it with your light brown. Same thing here. The bottom as well. Same here. Same here. And then at the very bottom, we'll just mix it and pull it up. Okay, now we're going to take our water brush and conclude the mixing, if you will, which is going to basically create a third color for us, which is really nice. And all you're doing is pulling up and down uh, to fill in the white space that is left behind. So I'm pulling down on this stripe here, 
I'm pulling up on this stripe here. Hopefully that makes sense and you can see what I'm doing in the video. I'm trying to describe it with words as I'm also showing you how to do it on the video. So I'm hoping between the two methods there that something will make sense. Sometimes it's easiest to learn by just doing and uh, that's what I've done. And so I'm hoping to pass some of the tips that I've just kind of learned on my own here as I've worked with these markers, hoping to pass those on to you. And I hope that I'm helping. That is my only goal is to help you guys. So there you go. As you can see now, we have some very pretty um, blending and highlighting here. And you can really see how the light source is working and how you have in these dips and bends of the hair, you can see how you would have shadow and then light and shadow and light as the hair kind of swoops down around her body. So now I'm just going to do this little part right here. As I said, I do like to work in, in little parts. So I'm just going to put some brown at the very top where the, the part is and then right at the top of the flower here. So I put some brown down. Now we come in with our lighter color, which is our light brown. Mix that and pull it into the white space. And then of course, do the same thing with your water brush. Just mix that together, fill in the white space that remains. And that's done. Now it's time to do the other side of her hair. So I'm gonna kind of turn this just a little bit here. I think it'll show up a little better and my hand won't be so much in the way. I'm going to just do this little part up here that comes down to right here around her face where it starts to dip down here around her face. And I'm going to do that part first. Just make that my first section and color that in. I'm going to come in now with the light brown and then of course use our water brush to fill in the white space. All right, so now I'm going to turn it back because I think now my hand will be a little bit more out of the way. I'm going to take some brown and go around her face. It's always going to be kind of darkest here all around the face. I have this light source coming in this way. So most of this is going to be a little bit lighter on this left hand side. But we still have these indents, if you will, uh, uh, that, that the artist has put in the hair. Kind of the way the hair is flowing, you can tell. Some of it's going to be darker where it's going to be shadowed, and some is going to be lighter where it's going to be um, hitting that light source. So I'm just picking those out. And again, the artist has done this, not me. And that's what makes some of these images so wonderful to work with, is the artist has kind of planned for you um, where to put that, that, that highlight in that darker place, the, the shadow. So now I'm coming in with the light brown and doing the same thing we did before, coming in at the top of the little stripe of color I laid down and blending and doing the same thing at the bottom. So just pull this dark brown, the brown color up and down. And up here. And then down here. Up and down here and then up from the very bottom here. And then we'll take our water brush and fill in all that remaining space. So just kind of with a up and down motion really is how I do this because I have color, you know, above and below the spaces that I'm filling in. So I just kind of do a back and forth motion with my water brush to fill that space in. I hope that that makes sense. Nothing magical at all, no special technique. You're just running your water brush, which is, has water in it, of course, up and down to fill in that space. And it really does create this almost third color for you, and it's really, really wonderful. Such little effort, and look at the beautiful results here. I just cannot get over how wonderful these markers are. Once you get the hang of them, I'm telling you what, guys, it's just, they're a dream to work with. They really are. So let's go ahead now and do her, um, her little clamshell top. And as you can see, it's very dark with the lines of the stamps there. So there's not much coloring that we need to do. I'm just going to fill it in the little white spaces there with a violet marker. So no big deal there. Now we're going to go ahead and fill in the shell that she's holding in her hand. And I'm going to use violet and light violet. And I wanted to do a violet shell because I'll bring back over the original card for a minute. Now I'm zoomed in, zoomed in so you won't be able to see it very well, but I already had done my background. I wanted kind of like a green and purplish to give that underwater feel, but a little more abstract instead of a normal typical blue. So I already kind of knew what colors I was going to be working with. And that's how I came up with violet for the shell. And then her tail we're going to do with a green in just a moment. So I put down the violet, which is the darkest color. And now I'm coming in with the light violet here and just kind of mixing in and pulling it into the white space and then I'll use my water brush to fill in the rest of the white space that's left behind here. Do the same thing along the bottom and that easy we are done with the shell. Super, super easy.
Make sure, by the way, that as you go back and forth between different colors, I always have a piece of paper towel on my workspace, and all you have to do to clean your water brush is just scribble it off on your paper towel until no more color comes off the water brush. Then you know that it's clean. Now, your water brush will stain after a while. I don't know if you can see it here, but my water brush, the tip of it, is no longer white. It's kind of like a purplish color almost. That's okay. That does not mean that your water brush is damaged or that you need a new one or anything like that. Um, um, it, that's just going to happen. So don't worry about that. Just make sure that you scribble it off in between colors so that you don't contaminate and get a color that you didn't mean to get on your coloring surface. Now we're going to go ahead and do the rock. And this is a rather large space. So, so I want to kind of just go over this with you because it can be a little tricky to color such a large space. Now I have worked before with um, my zigs with both um, Canson XL watercolor paper and Bristol Smooth. And I think that they are both absolutely wonderful. I would recommend when you have an image that has a large image like this particular rock, for example, I would recommend that you use the Canson because I really have to put quite a bit of water to blend and get this entire rock covered. And sometimes since the can since the Bristol rather smooth cardstock is not um, you know, it's not water paper, it's not watercolor paper. Um, sometimes you get a little bit of pilling when you P-I-L-L-I-N-G, pilling. Um, sometimes I say that word funny, I've been told. Um, but sometimes your paper will pill a little bit um, when you have to use that much water to fill in the entirety of the image. So if you do have, just kind of plan ahead, look at your image, and if you have a large space where you're going to be to need to fill in a fairly large, complica more complicated image, go for the Canson XL would be my suggestion. So for this rock, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, I only used two colors for the rock, gray and light gray. So what I did is, uh, again, I'm working in sections and I just use the image to kind of break up my sections. So I've put gray all along the, the, the gray, which is the darkest color, all along the right side, because again, the light source is coming this way, so the right's gonna be a little darker. And then underneath her body, her fin, of course, and her hair and her, her, fin, her tail and her fins, where it's going to cast a shadow on the rock. I'm now going to come in with the light gray and just go around and in a circular motion here, mix it with the gray that we've laid down. And just, you're not gonna fill in the entirety of the white space, you're just gonna put a little bit down here and just slightly mix it together with the gray that you've laid down. Just in a circular motion, pull that color out. And as you can see, and this is kind of what I was talking about, we still will have a lot of the image to fill in. And that's why you might want to go for the Canson watercolor paper when you're doing an image this large, because this is a lot of water that's going to be put down here to finish filling in this image. So that's just a, a, a little tip to keep in mind. Um, I have noticed when I work with larger images with the Bristol Smooth, you can get, like I said, that paper to pill just a little bit. So I say if it's a larger image, always grab your Canson XL watercolor paper. All right, so that is looking good for the right side of the rock. Let's come in now and do the left side. We have this little piece right here where we have just kind of like under her hair and around her um, her tail there. It's not a very big piece at all, so this will just take us a second to kind of fill in, and we'll just have a little tiny shadow right here, as you can see when I hit, hit it with my water brush there. Now we're coming with our gray again, which is our darkest color. And we're just going to go around where the tail and fins hit the rock because certainly they would cast a shadow there. There's going to be a little bit of shadow along the bottom as well. All right, so now we'll come in with our light gray. Circular motion, blend these two colors together. And then we'll use our water brush to fill in the remainder of the white space. And now this big rock that maybe looked a little bit intimidating before is completely done. We used two colors of marker and a water brush to create this. I just think that's so wonderful. Now I'm just going to quickly color the little flower in her hair. And I did not do any blending or anything with this. I just used my violet marker and just colored it in. It's such a small little image that sometimes when the images are really small like that, you don't really get much shading. So I figure why worry about it? I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, just color it in with one color. Now let's go ahead and do her skin tone. I use flesh color and blush for Caucasian skin tones. These are just my go-to colors. They're the best combination that I have found. The blush is the darkest of the colors, so I'm going to start with that 
and just put it along the, le the right side rather of her face because again we have that light source coming in from the left. Now I'm going to take the flesh color and in a circular motion kind of blend that out and now we're going to take our water brush to fill in the remainder of the space. Now it's a very light and I don't even know if it's going to show up on camera. There's definitely a distinction. You can see shading in real life in person, but because it's watercolor paper and it's a little thicker paper, sometimes it can be hard to see on camera. So as you'll see in just a moment, I often when I'm dealing with very light colors like these skin tone colors, I will go over it twice when I'm working with the watercolor paper. I don't have to do that on the Bristol Smooth because it's not that thick paper but but watercolor paper is thicker and it does absorb a lot of the color so I do find that I like to go over everything twice so I'm just going to do the hands super quick that are holding the shell and then you'll see I'll be able to go right back over everything that I just did um, and I'll show you how you do that and it's so easy you literally <laughs> just go right back over it and that's a great thing with the zigs is you are able to do this just go right back over everything that you just colored um, and you can do that effortlessly. Just go right back over it, grab your flesh color now, blend it all together, and as you can see, you're able to get it a little bit darker so that you can, it actually will show up a little bit better on this thicker watercolor paper. And I think that makes a world of difference, and it only takes just a second longer. It's so quick to work with these markers that it's really worth the effort, I think. Now I always use almond pink for blush on the cheeks and to do the blush I just kind of put the marker down and make a little circle on each side of her face and then I use my water brush and I just go right over it with right over the little circle that I created with the water brush and that just kind of helps it blend it in without messing up the blending that I've already done. Sometimes I have to do it twice to get it how I like it to get it dark enough. Um, but that's that's my little tip. I just go over those cheeks with the water brush and it'll blend it in a little bit easier. And so there we have very nice skin tone. And now all that's left to do is her tail. And for her tail, I use marine green. This is one of my absolute favorite greens that the Zigs have, that, that come uh, with the Zig markers. It's perfect for mermaid tails, absolutely perfect. So I'm going to just color this little section first because again, I'm breaking my image up into sections like I like to do. And as you can see, it goes very well with the green paint that I used on my background. So that's kind of, I, I, like I said, I had planned the background first, and that's how I knew what color markers I wanted to go with. So now I'm just going to come in with uh, the, the marine green again on this side of her tail. So up against her, um, her hair and basically on the right side of her tail is where it's going to be darkest because again that light source is coming down from the left here. So it's going to hit here where it's going to be lightest. And so that's where our lightest uh, part of our tail will be because we will have that um, the lightest color that is created with the water on, in that particular area. So it's going to work out perfectly for us. So we just blend, pulling this color out with our water brush here. And that's, that's it guys. That is how easy it is to blend that mermaid tail. So super easy. So now the last part here is just the little fins. I'm going to take some, some marine green marker and just go along the fins here and here because the tops of the fins are going to be lightest based on where I have my light source coming from. And so now I'm just going to take my water brush here and blend and pull this color up and out into the remaining white space and creating that really nice shadow and highlight, which is what, of course, we're always looking for when we do our coloring. And it is so easy to achieve this with these zigs. Like just, I gotta tell you, it is so easy. All right, that's it guys. That is a quick coloring of this beautiful mermaid image. And hopefully you can see as quick as it, I don't know how long this video is. Um, we'll know when it gets on YouTube, but it can't have been that long. And that quickly I was able to color this. Um, and as you can see, this is card worthy. This is really pretty and can go right on a card. So that is how easy it is to use these zig markers. I'm not kidding, I'm not an expert, I promise. It's just really that easy. I just can't say enough good things about them. And no, I don't work for zig, that'd be awesome, but I don't. I'm just a crafter who loves them and uh, hope that um, 
you know, you guys love them too, and we'll give them a try. So that's it, guys. That's my quick coloring video on how I colored this beautiful mermaid image from Honeybee Stamps. I will link to my earlier video uh, on how I created this shaker card in case you missed that. And um, that's it, guys. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and for asking to see the mermaid coloring. If you have any questions, just let me know. If I haven't explained something well or anything like that, just let me know, and I'll do my best to, to help. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.